I think sometimes in change, people think I have to make a decision right now. I have to enter the transfer portal. I like, but and, it, and because there's so much that's happening and the media makes it seem like time is so short. Now, sometimes time is short, but, but not always. Like you could have an extra several days or weeks or even months. Um, it's like guys that, you know, am I gonna en enter the draft or not? Well, bro, it's September, you know, like, let's focus right now you have a much higher probability of entering the draft if you have a good season and so we should maybe focus on that first yeah. welcome to the elevate podcast i'm your host and coach tyler johnson thank you for tuning in if you are a return listener i'd be grateful for your rating or review and if you dig this episode give us a like or share and now whether you've tuned in to elevate your mindset your game or just your day you are in the right place my guest this episode is our second return guest. Her first appearance was back in episode 10 of the podcast, if you want to go back and check it out. She is the founder of Selking Performance Group. She has a new book out, Winning the Mental Game, The Playbook for Building Championship Mindsets. It is linked up here. So go get yourself a copy. She is also the host of the Building Championship Mindsets podcast. Welcome back to the Elevate Podcast, Dr. Amber Selking. Welcome back to the Elevate Podcast. How are you? I am awesome. Thanks for having me back. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, excited to, to have you. Um, one reason we want to talk about an exciting new book coming out, Winning the Mental Game, The Playbook for Building Championship Mindsets. Love it. Um, any kind of title like that's going to strike a chord with me. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure some of our other listeners as well. What are you most excited about uh, the book coming out? Yeah, you know, it's this is uh, this is part of my life's work. This is a program. Is the the book is built off a program I built and back in 2013 that I've just, you know, seen have really transformational impact on people's lives. I mean, I believe that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, um, but I don't think a lot of people know how to actually do that. And so, um, what I've seen this program be able to do is really give people some some scientific information to help them believe that the brain is a real thing and that we can manage it and train it, but then also tools and strategies to actually start to think differently and really transform their lives by renewing their mind and, and again, give them some ways to do that. So I'm excited to just be able to share this on a broader scale with people that um, I might not be able to work with one-on-one -on -one or in a, in a team setting, but um, you know, the book's fun. It's interactive. It's got science. It's got stories. There's actually 46 QR codes embedded okay. throughout the book that you can sort of scan and it takes you to a podcast or to a social post or to an article or okay. um, so so a lot more than just what's in the book and then every chapter ends with some actual championship mindset training so things people can actually do to apply what they just learned to their lives and really build those mindsets that we know lead to success and performance and um, general well-being. I love the the QR code idea. I think, uh, especially now post pandemic, I think everyone's kind of reacclimated to to those. Um, yeah, I know, right? They, they they definitely made a strong comeback here, and are I think here to stay in our world. So it was yeah. it was like perfect timing for the QR code thing. I mean, if, right? if the if uh, the pan pandemic did anything, it was help people learn how to use QR codes. So now this isn't weird that it's in my book. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I think it's so cool, especially, uh, you know, to have some, some tangents and more resources like that. It's very cool. Uh, the title, the playbook for building championship mindsets, winning the mental game. Let's flip it. What's one of the quickest ways to lose the mental game? Oh, good question. Um, I think the quickest way to lose the the mental game is to think that you actually don't have control over your mental game. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people defer their control and power and responsibility over managing their own lives. And so that's sort of this thing, you know, when my, when I train my clients in this, it's almost like, ah, oh, dang, now I have to be, now I have to be accountable to this. You know, like it's, it's not my parents fault or my coach's fault or my trainer's fault or my boss's fault. Um, do they contribute to things? Yeah. But ultimately how we think is going to change how we experience that moment. And so um, I think again, to lose the mental game, you think that I don't have control over this and I'm a victim of some sort, you know? Yeah. You've had a great deal of experience working with college student athletes. What's one successful 
tool or, or, or something you might use to, as you introduce some mental game and helping them believe and understand that they do have control? What, what have been some useful things? Is it data? Is it research? Is it stories? Is it combinations? What are, what are some ways? Yeah, I think it's combination. I mean, we do a couple exercises that really show them the the brain body connection. I, I show I do that in my TED talk, you know, if, um, if it, people want to check that out and see like, what the heck are we talking about? I do it in a lot of talks I give, um, but shows just again, how our thoughts really impact how our body functions and moves. And, and so that's a really powerful anchor, but then it really depends on the person. Like sometimes it's, sometimes it's stories, sometimes it's science, sometimes it's scripture. Um, but one of the, well, I think one of the really cool things that when you're in a program long enough and you've got, you've got people. So I've been the mental coach for Notre Dame football for the last five years. And so, you know, every, every freshman class that comes in would get eight hours with me. It's just fundamental on going through yeah. this actual playbook um, and learning. This is how your brain works. This is how it impacts how you show up and here's tools and strategies that you can use to manage it. And so, you know, they all would get that when they first got there. And um, it's like, you know, it's like they're drinking out of a fire hose. So they have no idea, but some of the things like help them right away. And then sure. many of them keep that playbook and year after year are thinking about how to apply it, how to use it. And what's really powerful is when I bring the older guys in and they actually help me teach the sessions. And so when, when, you know, we've got our freshmen there and they're looking up to upperclassmen, that they respect on the field and in life, you know, and they're saying, Hey guys, sit up, focus and lock in because this sh like impacts how you play. <laughs> yeah. Um, like that, that's, that's a huge statement. And for them to be able to give actual stories about how they've applied it, how they've maybe struggled and, um, and how these uh, mental plays have given them some, some tools and strategies, things they can go to, right. Actual plays yeah. to run when it gets tough that, that has impacted their lives. And that to me has, has been probably one of the most powerful things that I've seen. And I like how you shape that. I think it's working with different sports and, and athletes and being a football guy, like plays to run. Like, yeah. you know, speak their language. And yeah. I think I think sometimes that gives, a, a, at least from football experiences of mine, a little bit easier access to, to get them to tap in. And then amazingly, like you said, I think if you can get that peer to peer, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think I think you see that at higher levels, too. Like all of a sudden they get in a locker room with some Tom Brady, Russell Wilson or something. And it, it starts to change you know, how they observe and see things. Uh, yeah, one of my best friends, he was a, he was a pitcher uh, here at Notre Dame and he went and played in the league. He's still in the league, but he, he was like, dude, I remember he's like the first day I walked in the Yankees locker room. I like, I was like, walked to my locker and it's like three down from Jeter. And I'm so <laughs> like, you know, like, oh my God, that's Derek Jeter. He's like, dude, like I'm a professional mm -hmm. baseball player, but I'm looking at Jeter like, oh my God, you're like my idol. And yeah. so sometimes we forget that, like, just cause every, like, Pros still look up to pros and yeah. uh, particularly guys that have been in the league as long as, you know, Brady and Jeter and, and some of those legends. So I, yeah. it, it's a powerful, I mean, and when those guys buy into things like that and apply it on a day-to-day -day basis, then it's a lot easier for other people to buy in, yeah. you know? I, I'm out here in Colorado. So we're hearing the commentary of Russell Wilson and how just the presence has, you know, shaped some culture already. Um, I, uh, I was on your sports radio show with Ryan Harris a couple oh, weeks yeah. ago. Ryan's yeah, the Ryan, man. Ryan's the man. And he asked me that same thing. Like, what is, what's the impact of bringing a leader like Russell Wilson to, uh, yeah. to a place like Denver? And that's it. It's like, you know, the number one way that humans learn is through the modeling effect. And when you can have somebody as consistent as a guy, and now I don't know him personally. So this is like, obviously my perception and sure. some people that I know that know him, um, you know, the consistency that they show up and the intentionality and purpose that they approach every day and every action um, just shifts when, you know, everybody around you, they start to step their game yeah. up a little too. Yeah. So good transition. Let's talk a little bit about leadership. Cause I know, I think that's a topic in, you know, you talk about a lot and transitions. I've had some experience working with some college teams with new coaches and changing of regimes and, um, it's difficult. You've got adults and kids, some leaving, some staying, but what are some tools and maybe you've seen in your experiences that, especially I guess, student athletes that maybe feel they can have a lot of feelings and kind of, you know, depends when the next coach or, or sometimes for the kid where they end up going if they go to the portal. Um, but what are some things through tough transitions or maybe transferring through the portal or coach transitions that student athletes can lean on 
to kind of help them get through a, you know, unpredictable or, or what sometimes feels, you know, difficult situation. Yeah. You know, I, I think that it's really hard for student athletes. The, the hard part is they're not in a position of power or control in that way. Yeah. And they're really, I mean, for much as what I just said about, you know, not being at the mercy of what's going on around you, th- there's still some factors that are outside yeah. of your control. Right. And so that's, what's tough from, from their lens. And yet I will say, you know, thinking right about that, um, not making, not jumping to quick conclusions. I think, you know, one of the things our athletic trainer um, at Notre Dame, Rob Hunt, he's amazing. And he always told me, he's like, you know, you don't have to know until you have to know. And he said, you know, players, they come to me on a Wednesday. They're like, Hey, Rob, you think I'm can I play this weekend? And Rob's like, I mean, I don't know. Let's get to Saturday. If you want a decision right now on a Wednesday, no, you're not gonna be able to play, but you know, let's by Saturday, you might be able to, but if you need a decision right now, it might be no. And I think sometimes in change, people think I have to make a decision right now. I have to enter the transfer portal. I like, but, and, and because there's so much that's happening and the media makes it seem like time is so short. Now, sometimes time is short, but, but not always like you could have an extra several days or weeks or even months. Um, it's like guys that, you know, am I going to enter the draft or not? Well, bro, it's September, you know, like, let's focus right now. You have a much higher probability of entering the draft if you have a good season. And so we should maybe focus on that first. And, um, and so I think encouraging people to take a breath, really understand what your timeline constraints are and don't feel like you have to make a decision before you actually have to make a decision. That would be my feedback from a student athlete side. Now from the, the coach side, I think, I think oftentimes when we come in as a new leader, we uh, overestimate how bought in people are or how excited Mm -hmm. people are because we're really excited about this new opportunity. And so really taking time to build relationships, to set clarity on what is it going to be like to be coached by you? That's the, that's really the question in student athletes mind is like, what is it going to be like playing for this dude and, or this guy or Mm -hmm. this girl, you know? And, um, and, and I think really given and given your student athletes, like a chance to see the vision on what are we trying to accomplish? What is it going to be like? And who am I? And then being really intentional about building those relationships so that by the time your season gets there, you can, you can run fast. I think, again, we try to run too fast early on and then it gets messy and then yeah. we're not able to perform at our, our peak when it really matters. Yeah, that's good points. I liked, you talked about vision. I think, yeah, I've always, I think, especially when it's a new leader, it's having one, but then I think talking about it a lot. A lot. And, and I think that's where sometimes they've, I've seen some coaches fall off where they have it and they might talk about the staff a lot, but the kids aren't, you know, and it's, you want to be sharing it a lot. Can you talk just about the importance of it and how to emphasize it to really, if you want to get that quote unquote buy-in, how that can help? Yeah. I heard a quote one time that was like, if it's fuzzy at the pulpit, it's mud by the time it hits the fuse. <laughs> and so I think that, that speaks good. to, to the like importance it. of clarity of vision. Um, but then repetition of vision, again, a lot of times just with leaders, like you said, we sit around and we talk about the vision and we know the organizational strategy and what we're trying to accomplish and who our customers are. I mean, if we're thinking from a business standpoint, um, but the, the closer to the base of your organization that you get, the more narrow their scope becomes and the less sort of broad vision they have. And so people can get very, very pigeonholed and not understand how their piece fits into the broader puzzle. And I think that's the importance of casting vision frequently and uh, consistently for your people is that they are constantly reminded one, where they're going, but two, how important their piece is to the manifestation of that vision. Yeah. The other challenge I see with some leaders is that like they, they don't have a clear vision or like they change a lot. And so like, you know, every year is a new thing or every week is a new thing. And it's like, that doesn't even give your people a chance to catch up and really, really buy in. And that's why I admire leaders so much who can stay anchored to a vision and to a process year after year after year. Um, 
even if other people think they're like, are you ever going to stop beating that drum? And you're like, no, because this is what I believe is going to lead to winning, you know, yeah. whether that's in sport or business. And, and so um, that, that really helps people get on board and know what they're signing up for and contribute in really meaningful ways. Yeah. yeah something you said else a little bit ago, and I think it's always a good reflection for coaches. And I think kids too, you know, what kind of teammate am I, but what is it going to be like to be coached by me? I think there's a lot of power in, in if coaches give that some thought and reflection. Um, it is. My advisor um, is Dr. Rick McGuire. Um, he, he was my PhD advisor at Mizzou and he's a legend in the field of sports psych. And, you know, he launched the, the Institute for Positive Coaching. And, the, you know, that's one of the questions that he asks coaches is what is it like to be coached by you? And, and, and that's, a, that's a really powerful question for coaches to ask themselves. And if coaches want to be really vulnerable, it's a really great question for them to ask their athletes. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think when we, we do this a lot in the lead, like I'm a vice president of leadership and culture for Lippert, which is a global manufacturing company. And, and we are really focused on leader development. And that's, a, that's something that we challenge our leaders to do a lot, like get feedback from your people and where are the gaps? Because a lot of times where we think we're strong, um, we might be weak or where we think we're weak, our team actually respects and appreciates that about us. And yeah. so it really can be liberating um, as a leader or as a, as a coach to get those insights because you didn't get into coaching to be a jerk, right? Or to yeah. not have kids okay. like really appreciate you. And, and so be courageous enough to ask those questions so that you can really leave the type of legacy that you got into the, the role to leave. And I think if you... It's also, I think, going to create a meaningful connection that you value a student athlete's input, um, not just on the board or in, in the scheme of things per se, but in how we educate and how we work with each other. Yeah, we, we did several, you know, with teams I work with and with ND football, like we did several listening sessions over the course of seasons um, to just hear like from the guys, just them yeah. and me, like, where are we at? What's working? What's not? Yeah. When do you stop doing? When do you start doing? Yeah. And, um, and, and they, and to, to your point, to allow them to feel heard. And then, but, but here's the thing, once they provide that, you got to do something about it. And so then to be able to, to, to take that and to have no names on it, but be able to really identify what are the themes or trends that came out of it. And then for, for our coaches to be able to make necessary adjustments that, um, just made the guys feel heard from, feel valued and feel like a part of creating what was happening, which they were, I mean, right. Because if, if they're not owning it and buying in and believing in it and thinking that they can contribute to it, then they'll just defer responsibility. And then you won't see that accountability show up on the field. Right. So yeah. um, that's a really powerful strategy. Just listen, like do listening sessions with your people. <laughs> what's what's yeah. working, what's not, let's make some adjustments and let's keep rolling. Yeah, I love that idea. Uh, new way we're going to wrap up the show recently. So a couple, two, two fill in the blanks. Okay. One, my dream is that mental skills would become blank. What would you fill that in with? Can I take it a little bit broader than just mental skills? Yes, you can. It's Sorry. your sentence. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's your blank. Okay. You, you run okay. with it. <laughs> so, so my dream is that mental performance becomes synonymous with strength and conditioning in, in the sport world. And that we understand how powerful it is when we build comprehensive, integrated, high-performance systems and what that can do to help people win on the field or the court or the pool. Um, currently, but also when in kids' lives way after their sport's over. Yeah. And this one's a little... with a paragraph. Sorry. <laughs> I did, it's, a, it's a long blank. Um, this, one's, this one's on you, and this is a question I like to ask athletes a lot, just also kind of in those listening sessions or, or one-on-ones, is if I really knew you, I would know this about you. If I really knew you, I would know blank about you. If you really knew me, you would know that I, <laughs> I'm pretty guarded. Like I, uh, I don't, I care a lot about other people and I mm -hmm. don't often let a lot of people care about me. Mm -hmm. And, um, for, 
I, uh, for as non-emotional as I am and I, I don't let things phase me, I really, really care about yeah. people and, um, about accomplishing really good things for them in their worlds. Now we know. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's not a, I think that's a, it's, it's, you know, interesting question. I always like gives you a little peek. So I appreciate you joining the podcast again. I'm going to have the book linked up the Ted talk she mentioned will have linked up if you want to check that out. Anything else you want to share or direct our listeners to? Yeah, I mean, hit us up on social media. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Champ Mindsets, on Facebook at Selkie Performance Group, LinkedIn, Selkie Performance Group. Um, and I'd just love to hear how you're applying some of the, the mental performance stuff, anything you take away from us um, that you're able to apply. Those stories are really meaningful to me. Like I said, the, the impact is, is what I'm after. And um, it's always invigorating to hear how people take some of this stuff and apply it to different aspects of their lives to just live more fully into who they've been created and called to be in the world. So I'd love to hear it. Hit me up. Excellent. And you can go also listen to her podcast. Tell them a little bit about that because I know it's one of the ones I dial into. So give them a little plug about the podcast. Yeah. So our podcast is Building Championship Mindsets. Um, you can access it on all your um, pod, pod platforms, but you can also get on our website, www.selkingperformance.com. All the fun stuff is there. There's lots of free stuff and then lots of other stuff you can access. So I'd love to see you on the site. Thank you for tuning in and all the way to the end. Appreciate that. If something this episode caught your ear is useful or unique, I would love if you would share it or, you know, a thumbs up is always encouraging as well. If you want to come back and check out more videos, smash that subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications, and we'd love to have you back. Have a great day and go elevate others.